could imagine that there's an orchestrator orchestrating all of this. Oh, there is, there is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is, yeah, there is, yeah. <laughs> It's, but when you that's the, the beautiful thing when you open up to that and trust that life yes. knows what what is needed or what is gonna you send the right word you say the right thing it um, when we make space for that or you somehow you're more empty of your own personal intentions and push and push we come into a natural kind of synchronicity with, with, with that with the sort of feel and it's just unfolding in a much more um, harmonious way, you know? yeah. and we feel it. You know, it you do, we feel it. There's no neediness, or pushiness, yeah. or <laughs> yes. tight schedule. That oh, yeah, yeah, it's nice. Very so good. my main question is, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> how come this beautiful message is not on the eight o'clock news? <laughs> you hear us? It is. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> what do you mean on the, on the eight o'clock news? Well, I, when I first heard of, of your message and you know, some other uh, gurus, it, it touched my heart so that I wanted to go out on the on the on the rooftop and shout it to everyone. <laughs> they wouldn't hear it. But it. It doesn't really work like that. Um, actually, sometimes the in in one way we can say because it is it is so simple. It's not like you have to do all these things before you can, you know, mm -hmm. come to such a state. It's, it's not. It's you know, we're not uh, speaking about things that people have to do, or they've got to improve or to create in that way. I speak more of what is already here. Something is already here. Almost so few human beings uh, in the way that we live in. In the strength of the identity that we believe we are, uh, we are so unchallenged in that that we don't seem to get the chance to go more deeply into what really is here. And so, when you do and you discover, you know, rather than create, it's not a philosophy, it's not my brand or something. It, it's just okay. It's my way of speaking about it, but it doesn't belong to a me or to a you know. It is just what is there, and. Uh, then it, it's just so clear that this is the, the reality, uh, an involuntary truth. It's just it's there anyway. But we can be quite unconscious about it because our conditioning, uh, culturing, just locates our attention and our interest at a very shallow level of the capacity of a human being to, to experience. You know? So we look for happiness. <clears throat> in 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 contact with things that our senses enjoy or the mind projects or something like that, you know? and uh, so whatever we find of happiness that is linked to having something or being somewhere, it is going to be short lived because uh, that that aspect of consciousness and life is always moving. So it's it's not going to be anything stable. If you find something outside that you feel. Yes, this is it. It will not be it. It will change. You know, as a natural law of the manifest world, everything is moving. You know. It has to be something you find inside. So this doesn't have to be advertised or promoted? Well, you know, I mean, there are so many uh, teachers and uh, teachings and so on. And uh, each, uh, I suppose, many people. They, they try as much as they can to to put their message or their pointing across. Um, I feel uh, the way it is expressed here. I am not here to convince anybody of anything. I just I feel that um, we make some videos, and um, I, I I really trust in the way that just like we talk now that somehow. I didn't go to this place, not because I say I won't go because, but it's as a natural course of what's mm -hmm. unfolding. I stayed, and now we are sitting here talking like this, yeah. and it feels like it's inside that synchronicity. It's just a natural thing. I don't want to make it sound too mystical because I feel if we look like that, everything is mystical, everything is so. But if I look at another ordinary, natural unfolding of life, 
when we give the space in ourselves to recognize it. So, um, uh, I feel that the, the very nature of life, and uh, what I call the God principle, and the, the harmony of existence, um, it, it, it brings uh, whoever is ready together in some way. There is no guarantee. I cannot say, oh, because we are all together, we are all going to get it. But it seems like something in us must be suitable, at least to hear it for now. And maybe most people don't get it, that they don't come to the full scene. But some seeds are sort of planted somehow inside, naturally. And because I feel that you have to be really in a strong sense of resistance, which some aspect of ourself, of ourself seem to be hmm, to resist this recognition. You know, it comes up with all kind of personal things. It's like something gets in the way of us looking like that. And uh, if you're a beginner, you may feel that wow, you know, it's uh, it's just not for me. But uh, thankfully, by grace, many people stay beyond this initial attack feeling, like you know, something doesn't want you to stay, and your mind becomes louder when you expect it to become more peaceful and things like this. Because um, in that type of environment, which is so natural, so loving, so supportive in this way, the things that we suppress cannot be hidden. They, they naturally want to come up to the surface. And the people have to be reminded to look at it in the right way, that it's a kind of detoxing that begins. By grace, you know, and and that it it has an end point. It just stay with it and follow the guidance, which is fairly straightforward and simple. And you, you something your mind will gradually adapt to that to that way of 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 seeing, which seems like it's a way. But as you as you discover, we are not encouraging people to to visualize something or to imagine something like this. It has to be a kind of sober seeing. It has to be authentic. You know? As soon as they experience that place of seeing, they know that they didn't create it; that they're just they're just discovering it. And as they discover it, they don't need any um, verification from someone that it is right for them. They they automatically feel a resonance with this. And, and see the fruits of it. They're living in the fruits of it. It's not like if you practice for six months. No, even people who consider themselves complete beginners and have no spiritual background, they may, in fact, already possess certain characteristics uh, are manifesting in them that makes them uh, very easily adapt to this point. Because we don't set out to change people. I don't set out to change people. I don't see. When seen from the correct perspective, even our localized expressions fit into the great play. It's just that what is different about it is that the the, the position where we place ourselves when we are in a strong identity as a person, it, it prevents us from seeing from the true place. When it comes that the very person we imagine ourselves to be is something observable, from a deeper place in ourselves, we are released from that restriction, and you come into a much wider field. He said that, mm. that release is a, it's not permanent right away. The person comes back. Yes. What happens is that because we are, we are not accustomed, we are more familiar uh, through habit and conditioning uh, to to operate from the personal place. But as soon as uh, we we move beyond the personal. Or we are invited to, or we experience a bit beyond the personal. Then what happens is that um, the 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 fruit of that seeing is is it, it is so profound that it's 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 almost like a shock in the system. But it 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 just puts a lot of things right. But somehow, like some kind of reflex, the the attention goes back to the familiar ground, you know, even unintentionally. And then we start to experience again. The, 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 but now, the former states will feel like, like, like strenuous. Like, like a burden. That they don't, yes, you begin to see that living from the place of a kind of egoic identity is not satisfying. It's, it's, it's very manipulative, very insecure, and all this. Whereas looking from the place of that of the consciousness, 
it is not personal. It's much more of an impersonal field. And somehow it's, it's immediately expansive and, and open. That is the attraction. And mm, for a while, anyone who comes to this may experience a struggle, like a fight, mm -hmm. much more intense than they would have done before they started. They start to see that the mind that they so much identified with is not who they are. You know, uh, it cannot be fully explained, but it's a, it's almost like a, a combination of old tendencies and uh, um, untested uh, concepts that we hold on to, and so many things. It begins to, it begins to somehow expose a lot of things that we assume are true, but now can see that they are not true, and they are not in service to a harmonious life. Become like that. Uh, when I was in India, uh, the first time I met Papaji, my, my teacher, my master, uh, one day I went to a restaurant and I met, uh, it was almost empty, but uh, I was sitting at a table and he was sitting alone. I, I didn't really recognize him, but he said, uh, You know, you are with Papaji, no? And I said, Oh, yes, yes, you know Papaji. He says, I am also too. He says, It's my birthday, can I, can I come, come sit with you? So I said, Sure, come, come. And he, he sat, you know. And he said, "It's my birthday today. It's it's a very special birthday today, because um, my trade is a shoemaker. I make shoes. And what's special about it is that today is the first time I'm wearing one of my own shoes." I said, "Wow, really? Huh? How's that? You know?" He said, "Where I come from, in a village in Russia, um, you know, n we are taught, you know." You don't put too much attention on yourself. You should always serve others. So everything you do should be for others. You never do something for yourself. It's considered, you know, like a, a very poor, poor manners or poor attitude. No? So he said he grew up like that, you know, like like this. But until he came to India, met Papaji, and experienced the broadness of his pointing, and and experienced the inner, the inner self. He began to realize. Wait a second, but you know, a lot of things start to come up for him. And what was coming up is all the things that you suppress in order to fit into something. And so this was a very important step for him to make. To be wearing one of his own shoes, like he was having some. He had to come to terms with it. But Papaji's meeting with him was releasing all these things. And this is where I'm coming from. Also, you can be taught how to be good. But a space must be given to nurture that understanding from inside. It should come from uh, an awakened state, rather than just, you know, an indoctrinated concept about something. You see, and that is a difference. Is if you learn to be like you, you, you just do this because you're told to do it, and if you don't do it, if somebody else is doing something different, you tell them that's wrong. You can't be doing that. You know, he said, "But well, why? Why should I not do this? Because it's against the law." Okay, and it'd be very difficult to have a con contact unless you are with someone who has come to the place of mm, a real understanding. They've come to their home to themselves. In which case, their consciousness is so broad because they are they are they come to the place of oneness. And that oneness is reflected in everything, even things that may look very different from how you are brought up. You, you are able to see that, that unity, that oneness in it. You see a purpose for every expression. You are not just merely indoctrinated into thinking, this is right, this is wrong. You are shown why. And even, even if you are not shown why, you intuitively would sense if something is not, is, is not in the harmony. You're not learning because somebody wrote down a law. You are expressing from a place of harmony. It's, it's very different like that. And this is why we have so many so much conflict, because almost every group, every society have their own set of laws. It's put down that on day. Them. Yes, and then after a while we accept it and it it seems the norm like this. Yeah. And you know, I don't have a fight with that. I just accept that it is also a, a part of the play of the consciousness. How it expresses itself. You know? Is that why, if I walk around here, I wouldn't 
dare or not dare but imagine spitting out like chewing gum on on the floor because you want to keep the space beautiful and you want to keep it in harmony as you say yes yes i, I would rather that you don't do that um, not because you see the sign don't spit yeah, anywhere yeah. but, but because natural. you have a natural yeah. love and and a feeling for the place and yeah. it comes from from this place also yeah. so i never uh, hear you yes. use the word enlightenment is is yeah. that because there's so much stuff going around that that so many people are looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow called enlightenment or well at first you know we have to look um, because we intuitively know we're not in a perfect place if we were in a perfect place within our being you know our lives would feel a lot more uh, complete and harmonious and most people cannot even if they don't have any religious or spiritual thinking and so on there's a there's a conscience within them and they 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 know that something is not right you know like the first time you're sick you don't have to know that you, you know you don't need someone to tell you you just know something is not right you feel sick yeah, yeah. yeah. So that place where, from where we can know that is inside everybody. There's a, a deeper knowing than our culture. There's a, something to do with our being. No? It's universal. But it's universal. And so people will, of course, um, through our conditioning, feel, yeah, yes, you know, I must, I've heard about this thing, enlightenment, and you know, I've got to find it, and so on. And we'll try many ways, which uh, perhaps we are not yet uh, fit to grasp at the level that we are. In terms of the, 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 the our maturity uh, to grasp that. You know? mm-hmm. Sometimes we think, oh, I can grasp anything, but when you put to it, you find your mind is in so much resistance or something. You know. But uh, if I can uh, take a, your your point, you know, that um, about enlightenment, um, largely people don't know what it means. They have an idea about it, but. Um, uh, what I w- what I would uh, try to convey mm, is not just an explanation about it, mm. but to actually uh, invite them into the experience, the direct experience of what that means, what it is. Now that's a total in- is enlightenment. Sim- simply means you 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 are yourself. You stop being what you're not. Not that you stop it; it just drops away. Mm. You are back in your natural, natural harmony, natural alignment, like that. Just about and truth. Yeah, but not truth as a concept, not, not truth as truth. an ideology, but truth as a living spirit, as a spirit of being. You know. Uh, so um, uh, I, I feel that's what's missing. I think we have a lot of information in the world, but few living examples of it. Of, of it. And I, I would like to feel uh, and see also. That uh, rather than explaining or teaching about it, invite you in the exp- into into the seeing of uh, of to that if you're open somehow, you can you know it's very easy. Like now, we the, my main focus of <laughs> sorry of teaching and sharing is through what we call the invitation, and it's just a question of just listening and following and just watching certain habits that we. We embrace daily, even without being conscious of it, and just asking you consciously to just uh, suspend them for a moment, leave them to the side for a moment, so that you can experience what is here that is not combined with any belief or nothing, just just a pure sense of being. So in that, there's no religion, there's no politics, there's no you know, just the the natural sense of being, and that's not difficult. If someone is open. And particularly if they are something, a kind of the timing is good for them. You can. I ask the people to cooperate with just this looking. You come to a very, very pleasant place of just emptiness. You see, and when you come to that place, then I ask them some very simple questions from there. That ordinarily, if the questions were asked, they would go to their mind for the answer. Mm-hmm. But because their mind activity is suspended. The responses come from a deeper place, and they are surprised at what they say. And it's good that they actually experience saying it and 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 confirming something, questions that you they would not imagine that they could answer. You see, about something in themselves that is not a form. And 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 what that is like, and that it is, it is unlimited. 
that it was not created, that uh, it's imperishable, uh, it has no parents, it has no children, it, it's just the purest, it's the purest of the pure. And when that recognition happened, beyond their expectation actually, and then a new possibility of seeing uh, can begin to emerge in them. Now, at the same time, when when and if that happens, sometimes there's a very strong force of resistance comes up inside. It is like maybe there's a, there's a, an aspect of our life in the world that gravitates towards just um, life about your body and about your your localized relationships and your dreams and your attachments and so on. Maybe they compact together and powerful resistances come like war. You know, uh, it, it happens almost every time. And what to do about that? Well, first, uh, you know, if you are with a, a, someone who has experienced it before, they'll tell you, anticipate this. It's, it's probably likely to happen. It's not a big deal. It has to happen. It has to happen. But the, the coming up of this is not an indication that you have failed. Mm. It is just to, to see where the strength of your identity and your culturing, you know, still lives in you, comes up, and it, it's it's. If I can put it in simple terms, uh, these forces they seem to come to bring you back into personhood, to bring you back into the state of just the regular guy and this kind of thing, because it's the only way in which you can you can be in a state of suffering. Or confusion, or depression, you have to become personal. If you don't drop back into personal, you can see from much wider eyes, much bigger eyes. You know. But it feels like I've got so much invested in this person. Huh? The the name tag on the on the door, yes. and the and the bank account, and the and the glasses I bought. When you experience the truth of yourself, in that instant, you'll see the smallness of those things. The smallness. Yeah. That, that they are, they are, they are small compared to the immensity of the beingness that you are. You see, only uh, as I often say, when you're when you're in a state and you don't know anything to compare, you think it is your world. You know, it feels the most important. You know? It's only when you're coming out of that state into a higher state that you can really evaluate how heavy that state could have yeah. been. If it's just if that's all you're used to, you don't even know it's heavy. You just get on with your life. But when you experience a much, much lighter way of being, a much more natural way of being, that is not, is not the production of any plans or intention effort. or effort and so on. It is just an un, it's just an unfolding, a kind mm. of flow. It feels totally true, but nevertheless, it will still take some time to face the force of your conditioning. You know, that will come up, that seem to want to sabotage this this opportunity for freedom. And and that, yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm. Does it help that there are no television sets around here? That you don't watch the news, which brings me like back into being scared, and I have to ensure myself to I have to gain a lot. There should be a time given when we experience the the, the seeing that is. And it's, and you see that the, the the realization of the self is not something that you have; it is actually what you are in this way. It takes a while for that to stabilize because the mind keeps coming up with, you know, yes, but and if and you know and and some things may come to to pull you your attention back into that mm -hmm. state. But actually, it is it is grace that has brought you into this state. So something is already protecting you. Okay, so you don't have any advice like uh, stop reading the newspaper, throw away your mobile. Uh... You may you may naturally start to feel like that by yourself. Mm. You know, if you're in your natural state, those things won't feel so so appealing. I I I prefer not to be telling people don't do do don't and mm -hmm. because it feels too much like control. No? But to point out, you see, that um, it's best that you stay conscious of your experience and be present with it. You know. Which is already a tendency to want to do that because of, of the, the the beauty of the fruit that comes out of it, you see. But at the same time, there's a play of powerful forces of, to distract you from that. It's almost 
And that's where it is in some cultures. Is the if something evil is inside, that's trying to keep you, you know, just in the shallow waters of personhood, rather than to go into your higher state of consciousness. You know, Maya. Maya, if you know the term, it very much is like that. But uh, what I would have to say about Maya, Maya only works against the person. It, 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 it so it's a help. Again. Yeah, we t- whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, that's this is what I've been driving on. Yeah. It is a help because if the person, the personhood mode, uh, is just attracted to things that feel pleasant and nice, wants to enjoy and to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but to enjoy is not necessarily freedom. We were just watching before coming up here, just you know, because I watch a lot. I just watch a lot of YouTube to see where the human interest is spread. Yeah. You know, like this. We were watching something, and it was like people. There was a um, some YouTubes about, um, you know, um, celebrities, uh, you know, surprising their fans mm. or something. Like that, mm. You know, and it, I don't know why I find it so touching. Something's very touching. You know, that like someone idolizes someone or loves someone so much. Let's put it like that. They love someone. Their 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 you know um, idol so much. They love they love the person so much. And they would never expect that they would get a chance to meet them. And then somehow this person come and say hello, and they go, "Wow!" Yeah. And, you know, so we're watching this, and I find some of it touching, and you know, watching it. And I, I said to what you remember what I said to you about it. I said that it's very beautiful to watch people being happy, but more than making people happy, it's important to help them to be. Because happiness is a state that will come and go. You made the greatest being if oh, it will also at some point become ordinary again. Whereas helping them to be free is everlasting. You see. So somehow in this um, pointing to to what is real, sometimes oh, like struggles come and sometimes people look deeply in misery and oh, but I know that it's the kind of birth pains to a higher, a higher state of being. You know? So you don't that see them suffering. They're not suffering. You may see someone, go, ah. and sometimes you know you you talk to me. You know, are you okay? <laughs> My mind is killing. My mind is killing. It's like the, it's worse than a headache. It's coming down. It's telling you're not good. You're gonna die. You're gonna get crazy. I said, and I asked the people to 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 question yourself. Who is the mind speaking to in you? And you're able to watch that because the reflex has been as soon as the mind stuff come like this, you go back into person. You go back into role. You go back into the person who is not good enough, and you're making a big mistake. <laughs> and if you go further than this, you're gonna end up in the madhouse, <laughs> and the people are. Uh, uh, you see them like, ah, oh, you're suffering from your, your own mind. I said, you have to discover the difference between yourself and your mind. Because in moments like this, for transcendental uh, understanding, you know, and uh, you know, the mind, the psychological aspect of the mind, is not going to just say, oh, I like you so much, you go ahead and have your. No, yeah. it will come. And in a way, it's great because with each attack, you must transcend it with the wisdom that you have been that, that has emerged in you by the, the 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 encouragement by the guidance you have received you must apply that not just i know but it must be applied and when you you see that you look at it with the, from the place of the advice you're given you see you, it will never sink you the the, the attacks yeah. will never you see the the person is the one that is suffering, not the presence. Uh, I say that uh, you know the, the the real the real evolution is from the state of personhood into presence, and from presence into pure awareness. You see, and uh, the the goal exists already as the only substantial truth there is about it, but we are unaware of it because we are so much taking the personal mode of Consciousness to which we think we are, we're taking that to be the fact, and that enlightenment is the dream. But it feels a bit more abstract to us, like you know, wow, it's really possible for that to happen, and so on. Whereas when you wake up to the truth, you will see that 
the one who was lost and searching for the self was just inside your own dream. And these are practical, tangible discoveries that you experience. Yeah. And a final question. Mm -hmm. Is that search in the world for happiness needed? Yeah, I once heard a famous actor, Jim Carrey, said, I wish everybody could be as famous and rich as I became, so they know that that isn't it. Is it, is it needed, that search <coughs> in the world? Or can, can you just skip it and go straight to the no. world? Uh, first, the world has to hurt. It has to frustrate you. Yeah, because, uh, you know, the earth, nothing is wrong with the earth, the, nothing is wrong with the planet, the, the earth by itself. It is an innocent manifestation of the what I'd call God, the God Self. But um, it is perceived on varying levels according to the maturity of the perceiver. Some just see it and say, Oh, I love nature, and I love tree, and I love the stone. Another one sees that, wait a second, everything is nature, including the cities, all nature, you know, like this. It depends on the way that we look, you know. But I would say that uh, your, your question seems to, if I get it right, mm -hmm. do we have to um, go through all? I mean, you know. Well, could my child skip all of this and just at 12 uh, no. say, no. Wow, well, thanks. Uh, thanks. No, <laughs> there is, there is, the, the, the child <laughs> is not the child. The child is a stage of consciousness. You know, It's not that there is some child or a person who exists independent of everything, who mm -hmm. has their own autonomy and freedom to make a choice. There is some inner development happening. It may, you know, we, we may not understand or accept that, that within the, the, the child consciousness or state, maybe are some more refined qualities that are that have passed on from previous modes of existence and you know it may be more ripe spiritually than the parents actually mm. you see it's very difficult to to say because we measure things by age we said that's the criteria you know by 15 you should be like this and so on but there are many you know, children who are much more spiritually advanced than their parents and uh, you know, but they may be not advanced as a child. They probably still have other childish qualities. But they are some at some level. They are much more advanced. We cannot say what the particular qualities or attributes would be to render that that particular aspect of consciousness or unit of consciousness as being ready to make that step. You see, there may be even in a family that has no religious in uh, in association or interest or spiritual interest or something. There may be someone born in that family that has a very, very pow powerful urge within them to, to go more deeply into the nature of the Self. and they're just, That's just how they, the conscious behave in them. So it's not that you know, it may manifest like that, and it may seem like, why does my child just suddenly want to go and do this? I mean, why do they suddenly want to do anything? Because somehow the inclination must be ripening in them to be compatible with certain things that they feel naturally attracted to. And some children are naturally attracted to um, watching or playing a lot of video games for the moment. Another one might be interested just in sort of just sitting there and they're kind of like in states of contemplation and they're not interested in toys. They just love to sit and like this. Another one mm, wants to make friends and always need to make friends and have a lot of friends and email and Facebook and whatever like this. They are so varied in their expression. No? And I feel each according to their inner temperament, which is not necessarily in the control of their parents. Their parents may try to say, why you read so much? Go and do something or whatever. But these traits or characteristics may be much more deeper than the parents or even the child can control. It may be just a force inside that's moving them this way. But uh, I would put it that every human being, or the consciousness in its human expression as people, Within them is the seed of awakening. It's not uh, when we discover the truth of ourselves, it will not feel unfamiliar to you. No, it feels very intimate. It feels very, very natural to yeah. you. See, so it's not that you are going to become something different from what you are. As a matter of fact, as we evolve in our understanding and wisdom and insight and experience, we find that the the less the more you lose of who you think you are, the more you become of who you truly are. You know? 
that many ideas we have about ourselves. We say, you say you include that, that's just what I am. As you awake internally, you start to see, but no, that's not true. That's just picked up from something, and it's just some sort of like superficial prejudice against something or whatever. But it's it's not been tested in my heart, and many things fall away uh, by that. You find that you're left with a, a much simpler um, a functioning that's much more harmonious than someone who is collecting information and think that that is knowing the world. You see, we may have a lot of information, uh, um, informational knowledge, and still your life is not integrated into a very easy or you know smooth existence. It's like too mental, like thinking the life more than experiencing yourself as life. And so we we never know who who will you know in in say a retreat you know who who will who will somehow in whom will this understanding just implode or just just uh, break break up all the untrue you know? so it's not about the circumstances that I wear the right clothes do my hair nothing at all to do with that <laughs> nothing we can enjoy that uh, you know but it, it is not it, it is not to do with anything it's not even to do with the, your being really really good on the outside i mean you know that's fine also someone could be really all messed up and did many many wrong things and maybe more easy to come to that recognition of the self than somebody who has a lot of concepts about what is good and so on like that you know in fact we were finding that now this uh, what i'm sharing now uh, it has been you know shared with prisoners in certain states in the united states and and that it's it's so amazing because maybe because they don't have so much choices or whatever they they're looking and people find whoa you know this 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 being shown that I have within me the capacity to observe rather than say to just identify with my reaction. Some space comes that is not so claustrophobic that they can observe the the, the behavior and, and what's coming through the mind and feel the natural choice of, of staying as the witness or being pulled into the invitation to to carry out the mind's projections or something like this, you see. It's very, very um, practical. Coming back to what we said at the beginning, so that prison is the mind, and that prison feels safe, or it feels like home, but it isn't home. It is not home. You see, the thing is that although a person is not the full deal, is not the full consciousness, but every expression of consciousness, being consciousness, um, feels natural to some extent. You know? So also the so, person. Yeah, the person. The person is also a form of consciousness, but it is a much more contracted state mm. of consciousness, um, based upon a very shallow paradigm that um, it is the body, uh, mind, and conditioning. Yeah, conditioning depending upon whatever environment the body mind is is placed in. You know, so then the 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 the, the, the collective, um, you know, fruit of that association and so. Um, we is is our sense of personality, who we think we are, and um, but who we think we are is not what we are, is it? But who we think we are, we can live in that for a very long time, yeah. because you find your way, whatever. You know, if someone was in satsang, and they were in satsang deeply in some level, but then somehow through the mind, something begins to pull away from that. And then somehow, at some point, they've given it. They've given it some too much attention, and so on. And so they, they, it starts to pull them out, away from the the, the energy of the sangha. And then they may leave the, the the sangha and go into another environment, and that environment will feel just as realistic. It feel you know, but you know, I'm meeting friends and uh, you have a life and so on. And you're not able to evaluate for a time, you know, what what a mistake that could be. Not a mistake, as in the ultimate law, but just that you didn't fully grasp the the like we do a lot of time. We don't we don't grasp the opportunities that we have. You you, you make lesser choices, and you end up in a lesser way. And until and life does try to correct that and send us clues and opportunities and to develop a sensitivity enough 
to recognize those moments and to use them to your advantage. And if we keep overlooking them, the lessons become more painful somehow. Hmm. It's not a, it starts knocking on the door harder. Yes, or to or you may you know just something exposes something that you become so totally ashamed of or whatever. Hmm. Then it may take that degree of you know of hurt hmm. to shift the ground, you know, which will take you to a better place anyway. But I know that uh, what I, what I call God, the 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 activity of that pure consciousness, is not vindictive. It's not to to shame you or something. You know, it's more to bring correction and to help to elevate and to to come to the the fullness of your capacity. Mm. You know, of your potential. You know? So you show another opportunity. Hmm? You show another opportunity for people, another way. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's a very from for myself. I say. It's a very natural, very natural way, but it takes a bit of time to, to, to somehow, you know, grasp it, you know, mm. because yeah. the mind is so much in a groove and use it to go into the groove of personhood. The record playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, but it has to be grace because we are so conditioned to to live as an ego and yet so many people are drawn to to move to 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 deeper depths within their own um, possibilities you know um, the life is hurting their dreams are failing or something all these things have to happen for you to move to your next stage your next the next step within your evolution of, so no of mistakes well, I can, uh, you know, the, at a at a lower state, from a very person bodily centered consciousness, you know, many many mistakes for the person. But uh, but life the, makes for, no mistakes. But for the consciousness, uh, the you know, mistake is um, is also a mistaken concept. You know? <laughs> but it's 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 useful, you know, for a while. You know? It's it's just a lower a lower expression of something that can be more high. You have to make mistakes. And mistakes is part of the way in which consciousness refines itself. It has to learn through. You know, the worst thing to be is to be a perfectionist. You see. Well, I know all about that. Because <laughs> then you know it's like you can't afford to be seen to be wrong or something. Yeah. You know, it's a very, very, it's, it's such a handicap. But when we, the, the point is that we 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 learn swiftly from the mistakes. And and integrate our experiencing into in, into a, to a higher the higher expressions of consciousness. You know? We have to wrap up because your coffee is getting cold. No, no, don't worry. No? You know, I'm used to co- no, coffees. Uh, very co- good. Cold coffees in Satsang. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> so being with you with you guys here and with you, it feels like I said it before before you arrived. It feels like being with old friends. It feels yes. like I, I've known you. I've known you and you and you. You know, forever. before you say this, when I first uh, came here, I had a feeling like it's the same that I have with Ojas that I've known him for a very long time. Mm-hmm. But I don't need to say that. So it's just a feeling. But I know that feeling is something what feels is that? very good. <laughs> I feel it is sort of like <laughs> that uh, something, either something that is is presently manifesting or is latently present in you. Uh, there's a greater sense of there's some kind of resonance or something, some compatibility you know, energetically or something. Hmm. I don't talk about that because you know we do meet uh, beings with whom you you have a natural resonance with them, and you 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 you, you spend more time easy. Like just you, sometimes you meet people and you know you immediately can trust them. You have no background. Where does that come from? You know, it it just come from the God self. You know? And uh, and there are other situations where you meet beings, and you know you have got to walk very carefully because there's a minefield there, and uh, you know like this. So they've got to be gently eased into back into themselves. It's like um, it's like you have a dislocated arm, but you're not aware of it, and it's got to be just nicely eased back into position or something. So is that then the self recognizing the self, or is that too big a words? That old friendship, that. Um, as I said, you know, the realization of the self is um, it's such a profound 
change in orientation from the old perspective of uh, a, a, um, human experiencing to experiencing as wholeness, uh, impersonal wholeness. You know, from the personal perspective, it can seem like the impersonal realization feels a bit cold and dry and lacks passion. From the mind of the personal perspective. But within the actuality of that realization, it is the most natural, and uh, it need not. To, it's not necessarily. It doesn't need to make rules. Actually, rules actually are made when we are not living in a conscious way, and it it it's also a tremendous tool of consciousness, because people treat each other uh, um, within the law, not because they love or care for each other. But because primarily, they're afraid to get into trouble for breaking the law, and so something you know controls that a bit, until they can be evolved enough to be good just because they are good, not because they can get something, not to manipulate a result, but just because of the love, of loving, you know something like this that they genuinely rejoice to see you happy, and, mm. and you know like this, but they. They're not trying to make you happy, but uh, you feel happy in their presence, and uh, you know it's it's uh, it's the only reliable constant thing there is. The rest, if it's contrived, if it's if it is like another thing that we, we must do, and it will just be a look-alike freedom. It will not be freedom. It has to be free to the point where it's not even aware of free. You see, yeah. Then it's natural, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Well, thank you for this great talk. Yeah. The general and the regular uh, human expression is not. Um, is not yet accommodating those possibilities of contemplation. We live in hand-to-mouth world, and you know, yeah, you know, I like this guy, I don't like mm. this guy. Mm. And um, we appear to be comfortable and uncomfortable with our way, you know, but because we accept it as a fact, more than a possibility, it's not really the way we could live, much more harmoniously. But I don't know. To say that, you know, the purpose of the life is to make a really is to make Eden out of our life, to make this world a beautiful place and so on. I don't feel that that is the purpose of the life. I feel that everything that is playing is what needs to play in that moment. We have to overcome it internally. Rather than try to rule it externally, when we overcome it, overcome it, the world means what? Not the world is trying to overcome you. Overcoming it means that our our sense, our sense, need for sense gratification, and for making things much more they are than they are, and and for being needy and for projecting and dreaming and make our lives miserable because we are not going to get and be fulfilled. By our projections, because the world doesn't work like that. You know, you might believe it so strongly that you make it feel real for yourself, but it it it, it is based on on fear and selfishness, whereas it has to come from harmony and love. So for that, um, some some awakening has to happen. We have to, you know. I don't feel that we are starting from scratch by. Trying to get people interested in this, I think that that's God's work. You know, that's that's the that's the you know the God self, you know, brings those who are ready for that. Is bringing uh, many beings to different places because they're ready for that for now. It's not that God brings those beings who are ready for awakening, and that's all He's concerned about. Everything is is in the God field. You know, even unrighteous actions are 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 part of the great drama somehow. But within that great play, there are areas 
just like in in one ocean you can have some areas which is like frozen ice iceberg in the same ocean other part has got hot springs mm. in the same ocean then in the same ocean of existence there are all these things and right where there is uh, on the in the same in the same world an area uh, that flares up with enough heat that's yearning for you know for uh, for the awakened state then that area is is very well cared for it will come more into the miracle of existence it will experience that there is a grace that there's an order that there's a higher intelligence in whose in whose embrace it takes, it it lives the others will have aspirations but it's still within the realm of personhood they they, they can have they can have uh, you know billions of whatever kind of money or they can have uh, empires of places but they will still they're still not awake and uh, for myself i would say the, the 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 highest purpose of this operational existence is to wake up out of the dream of um, what we call maya wake up to the to the the truth the truth of being i cannot see anything that can compare with that there is no happiness that lasts if it's not the happiness that you found as the as the very core of being you know if it is happiness what i call a reflected joy the happiness of having good food and oh, yeah it will be short lived sometimes it lives shorter than the food you eat but if it's a happiness that is there you know it's it's in, integral to you you then everything you touch is touched with this happiness everything it takes on this happiness because it is your radiance you know it's very contagious also is yes it is contagious because you know this is what i sometimes say yeah, may truth and love be contagious again hmm. meaning that you know that it just spreads in the, in the because we have all the books we have all the things we read 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 but what is missing is the is the is the living evidence of it you know that uh, when you experience that you know it speaks directly in our being it doesn't have to go to your mind you see if you meet a, an awakened being you don't even have to think about it it's it's already the serum is in already you you you, you can't explain why you feel the way you do something deep in us just knows like that that this is not the ordinary thing it just knows it Is it like a taste when I taste coffee? Yeah. I I don't have to think it's coffee. I taste. Yes. Yes. Is it the same with yes, with truth? Yes. You you have a taste for it? Yes, it 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 must touch. It must open up inside the enzymes of <laughs> of awakening of of and uh it's like it's like a a taste a smell that you know but you 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 cannot explain where from you know it's instinct to us but we are we're not aware of it but as soon as it uh, it it touches you know that space is inside i used to i don't speak like this so much now but i said that we have to you know we have to find your g spot you know we have a word of saying it. yeah and what it means that your god spot yeah. you know, you know <laughs> because what it means like that is that somehow something has to touch something in you that is not your rational mind you know it's not uh, logic you know it's like it's it's your awakened your awakening potential and something begins to move inside you that uh, y- your mind cannot explain it you know? but you are naturally convinced you you just naturally are it's like an explosion of love and you can't help you can't say listen I'm not, I don't want to think about this you have no defenses against it something begins to move like this and if it's if it's nurtured meaning that if it's not disrespected it's ah, I don't want to so, which there may be for some people that that space to say no I'm not interested in this you see um and even them saying i'm not interested in it is 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 destined that they would be at that stage for now but it still will leave a seed that they will be reminded of again at some other point 
with others it could be just that touch a feeling a, a glimpse awakens that movement inside them and you know their orientation in life just changes and they, they they just know that they have to come to the end of that it sets up a longing inside it sets up a an urge or an enthusiasm for something and they are just destined to find that you have they have to find it this is the this is the magic of uh, consciousness i think I was just observing as you spoke now, some things you say, it's like inside it's like bombs of understanding and love and joy being released. It's so, it's so, so beautiful. So. Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes we, in the evenings when I'm sitting, sometimes maybe you are two or three of the, the friends might be there, and we talk about a different way. I, I speak a different way. They talk a in a different way than I do when we're sitting in a big group or something. Mm-hmm. It just comes. Right? I don't intend to. It just comes like this. And uh, I often check with them. You know, like, is this of any value to you? <laughs> and like this, no, because um, it's not so much instructions. It's just uh, it just comes out of a joy, and it and and it really, um, you know, it's it's not a teaching. You know, it's like going into another room and saying, look in this room, and you know, like this, and. It, so I need to hear back from them that you know, well, you know, yeah, this is it's amazing. We're not learning, like what happened when I met Papaji. For a while, I said that I was not learning anything, but I was changing a lot. You see, so sometimes we expect to kind of learn something like, oh, I learned this today, I learned that, but I wasn't learning. I was just changing, you see? transforming, transforming. Something was just was just. Change. You yeah. you can feel it. You know. You can feel something is changing in the way that you experience things, in the way that you feel and move. You know. It's like it was changing like this. And um, so that that response often comes. Yeah. You know. It's like it's like uh, we are just experiencing more spaciousness inside, and it's not really that my mind learns this. It's just somehow. It's, it creates a transformation in in the way the, the bits are put together and working. Something is changing like this. That's another way. But normally, when we sit for satsang, my my pointing is very simply. I'm just you know, I just want you to see this. And no matter I might speak hundreds of words, I might write hundreds of words, but it's only to see this thing. You see, and then. It, when the beings are trying to approach that seeing, they have so many questions about this, and we try and just bring it back into this. Can you come back to this? And then sometimes there's tremendous resistance to come there, and it's oh, it's so hard. And I say, yeah, this is this is the mind. This is not this. This is your mind doing it. It's as though you you what it what it what it's the message it's sending from when I hear that is that um, it's not just your mind. It's uh, you in your self belief as a person. It has a has a relationship with with that mindset. They go together, and together they will not encourage each other to find the truth. It must be grace uh, functioning at some level to to help you to see clearly enough. Uh, because sometimes you're made you're you're made to see things you feel you're not ready to. But it's only because you, when you, when you, when you see them, you realize that you're ready for them. But if you project about it, you think, "No, nah, I don't really want to know about that," and so on. So it, it's there's such a wisdom at the very heart of all of this play. There's a wisdom, an invisible wisdom, but uh, but to some it is quite visible. Well, thanks for singing this song. Huh? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was uh, sharing that you know one of the things when I came to England first. No, I was 16 years old, coming from Jamaica, no? and uh, I came when I arrived here. I came into a kind of church community. It was part of my landing, you know, my mom's. Uh, 
uh, church group. She was living here in London for really many years. And it was very wonderful. It was very cushioned, you know, very loving, very, you know, it just makes it very easy. But, um, and uh, they are largely really nice, you know, we grew up like this, but, um, you know, they had a lot of, uh, there's still there's some people in the churches, you know, like when I when I when I started going to college and then I'd come back to church maybe maybe once in six months I'd show up and you show up at the church and after church usually we'd you know outside people would meet and you know and they they would talk a little bit and it was a nice part of after church meeting and then somebody invite you for lunch and you know this kind of, it's very nice uh, even when I was working in the market and, you know years later. I met some, some, you know, elder people, you know, they're, some couple are so, they're so wonderful, they're like brothers and sisters, you know. I see them in the market and it's, it's so, it's just a vibration, it's so nice inside. But uh, some, of course, it's the same everywhere, you know, you meet people who are at a very more shallow way of, the, they go to church, but, you know, they really feel that they're right in criticizing people, you know. And that that was not nice. That was not nice. But it's not all like that. But in the end, somehow I uh, moved away from from that. You know. mm. Did you see the Christ Chapel? Yeah, yeah. Very, very. I feel very still inside. Yeah. Yes. It's really. Uh, still makes me angry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, in what way? Yeah. This Christianity thing. It still triggers but Christ, yeah. Christ is not a Christian. No, I know, but yeah. all the things around the people yeah, make it. Reminds you of, it of, reminds me of that. Yeah, it, it depends on, on the, what expression of Christianity it is. So, yeah. It's so diverse, you know. Some is very much, uh, you know, sort of uh, like indoctrinating Christianity. And now there's much more. Uh, younger movements which are not based upon, you know, what's happening in the church, like this kind of stuff, but more that, uh, you, like, this is your temple and they move and they're doing a lot of healing work and stuff and not so much. It, yeah, it just depends on the individual. There's some, some beings are very beautiful and some, uh, maybe because of the evangelical aspect of Christianity, how it developed, you know? That can be maybe a bit pushy, and it is what we talked about earlier when I say that if you set too many rules, you know, and then people just learn to follow the rules rather than to grasp them, the 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 the, the essence of them, then in the end you end up with just a kind of not a deep understanding, not an understanding that took place in the heart, that the, the life is lived from inside out more than from outside in. Then it's different. Then, then it would be a different. Yeah, that was about me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the emphasis here is really on uh, the, the realization of the self, the seeing, the recognition of what is true. You know, because once it is seen, and you see that the, that you who see it are not separate from it. That is the that is the most practical teaching. You you come to see not as a not as an idea, but as an inevitable proof, unavoidable proof of what you're seeing. That you know, still, the, the mind is in, in there. You know, we, we cannot just live life at a level of resistance. It has to be that you come into the harmony of, of, of the real seeing, and uh, that uh, uh, the truth in that way is not the religion that we speak of. You know? which is sort of like just doing something because you're told to do it. There are some good things about that also, but not in its entirety. You have to somehow come into it in a very organic way. You have to experience it, that it is true inside you, not just as a belief, but as an experience. And then out of that experience, the love is flying. Uh, If we take the example of Bantisaj, you know, the, the, the people say it's very loving and very peaceful here. You know? It's not because I say to people, "This you've got to be peaceful and you've got to be loving," you know, in that way. You know, but because in discovering more the truth of what you are, the love comes out of it, mm. 
and the, the, the peace comes from it. So. But that also that, that already resonated when I started communicating with uh, Kalyani. It's also in like, or maybe it's a projection, but it's also in little texts and little uh, email yeah. contact. Yes, and yes. You start sensing that there's a flavor around it, that it's yes. loving. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's really tra also transmits. Yeah. I'm guessing you guys also with the, with the Muji TV and stuff, you're just throwing love into the world. Or <laughs> I hope it's like that. <laughs> yeah, it feels yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just spreading like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Even though that, that may be the case, it does not mean that that is the way it will be perceived. You know, you, you will still find people who are totally against, against. They may not have a good argument, but they just feel it's, it, they are against. You know, they don't want this to yeah. be to be sad or hurt. They don't have a necessarily. Not everyone w would love to see a harmonious world. You probably be surprised at how many would not want to see it in the way that we speak about. And they have their role to play in the great consciousness too. My feeling is that everything can have its play. You know, they can even have very different ways of expressing. Because that's how wide the consciousness is. The consciousness doesn't take offense at the manifestation. The only thing is, when seen through, perceived through the eyes of personhood, which is very narrow field, it gives rise to a lot of conflict and uh, sometimes hatred and opposition and so on. When seen from there, when seen from the true perspective, from the inmost place, it doesn't give off that bad smell at all, you know? because you don't feel threatened by other ways of expression. It can happen. You just feel, you know, we need everything, you know, the the, the, the true and the untrue, the, the good and the bad. Everything is there, you know. And I feel uh, uh, not necessarily a love for that expression, but a love for for that which gives the expression. Hmm. You see? So. Um, I don't feel I have any natural enemies, although some people may feel you treat you in this way. I don't have, you know, I don't want to get rid of them. How can someone hate you? I cannot, you know, uh, how, how can someone hate anyone? Okay, but <laughs> if someone brings this loving message into the world, why? Why sometimes people don't know why they are the way they are. They don't know why they dislike someone so intensely. You know. They, and also sometimes they misread uh, things. You know. uh, they just have an idea in the mind, or that you know they don't like some, something is not feeling comfortable inside, and they blame you for it. You know, like, you know. but uh, it's just like this. It's, they, they don't necessarily, if you if asked about it, they may not have any really good reasons that they can say. You know, they say, I just don't like it. I like all that stuff, all that bloody stuff, or what? And it's like that too. Um, uh, the important thing is whatever people may feel, um, uh, and sometimes you, you get feedback of what they feel. The most important thing is uh, is is not to not to take that into your being. Somehow, my life is not so much about being against anything. It's just more to 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 see what is true. See what is true. What is true. Not ideologically, I don't have any ideological truth. Just what is true as yourself, a spirit being. You know? When you when you feel the truth, which is more than belief, it's not you know, it's not a set of beliefs. It's it's the pure essence of being, the pure consciousness. And and you understand that it is it that's manifest everything. Then the whole thing changed. Everything is like you just see God everywhere. You just see the truth everywhere. Love you, love you, love you guys. So nice to meet you. Very great, very great, very great. Thank you.